to focus on the first problem of uh, the 2025 MIT integration big quarterfinal number four, which is the definite integral from x equals to zero to x equals to 10 of x squared with the small change being in terms of the fractional part of x plus two. So this is this is interesting. This is very interesting. Uh, and so let's see how we may be able to solve this problem. So um, this is obviously a very interesting problem. Um, and it becomes easier when we re-express the fractional part of x, that small change in the fractional part of x plus a half, into a derivative uh, with respect to x of that fractional part times dx. This is the same thing because the dx's will cancel and you sell back to these. Now, let's try and understand what a fractional part means. So the fractional part of x plus a half is the same as x plus a half minus the integer part, which is the floor of um, x plus a half. So if you have uh, our x and y axis as shown here, and then we plot uh, x, so um, the floor of um, so this line first of all is x plus a half, right? And then the floor of x plus a half means that between um, zero and a half, this point here is when zero is less than one, that point is, that becomes zero, right? So this entire region, it's zero. And then uh, as soon as it hits one, it continues to be 1 until uh, it transitions to 2. And as soon as x plus a half transitions to the value of 2, then it becomes 2 for that entire duration. So that process continues, continues, continues. So this is the flow. Now, when we get the difference between the, the, difference between the uh, value of x plus a half and the flow of x plus a half, it's just going to be this sawtooth-like uh, function. And that's why sometimes I personally call this a sawtooth function. Uh, but we'll see how this looks like in the next uh, slide. What we end up getting is that the difference between the uh, function x plus a half and the flow function, and that is the integer value, it's just going to be this sawtooth-like um, representation, as we mentioned previously. So the fractional part is just going to be, it changes from 0 to 1, then it drops back uh, to 0 as soon as we get to the next integer value, and it continues so on and so on and so on. Now, um, what is interesting here is that the gradients, and that is the derivative of this fractional fun, um, part of x plus a half is going to be one for this entire duration. And at the point where there is a transition back to zero, the delta in the function is going to be negative one, but the instantaneous change in x is going to be um, almost zero. So that means that we have an instantaneous uh, gradient of negative infinity here. And that's how we represent it here. So that the derivative of the fractional part of x plus a half is one when x is not equal to k minus a half, but it's equals negative infinity when x equals to k and a half. So at these points here is when now the gradient is um, negative infinity, but otherwise it's one. Um, so our integral starts from 0 here to 10. Um, and how are we going to represent this? Um, so let's see how we now are going to use this information to solve our problem. Back to our integral, right? Um, so we now know that we are integrating um, the product of x squared and the derivative of the fractional part of x plus a half. 
um, from x equals to 0 to x equals to 10. Now, what's important to know is that we found out that this uh, derivative is 1 uh, for values for when x is not equal to k minus a half, but it tends to infinity, negative infinity when x equals to k minus a half. So what this means that to, uh, we can split our integral into uh, the integral when this part is 1, and this is the usual integral. But when the derivative here uh, is negative infinity, we employ the function known as the delta Dirac function. So if you don't know much about the delta Dirac function, uh, delta, D-E-L-T-A, Dirac, D-I-R-A-C, uh, integral, uh, you can search that on Wikipedia and you'll learn a little bit more about that. So what this is telling us is that we have uh, this value tending to negative infinity um, instantaneously. But when you integrate it, uh, it coughs out that value at the specific uh, location of x equals to k minus a half. So, uh, and we have several of these uh, points. So we're summing it uh, from k equals to 1 to k equals to 10. That means uh, when uh, x is equals to a half, that is k minus equals to 1 minus a half, to uh, 9 and a half. So summing this up, uh, we now get the our usual integral here uh, plus Actually, we can pull this negative out here. Um, x squared and x at this point is k minus 1. So uh, this is what our integral of the delta Dirac, negative delta Dirac, times x squared yields. So the square of k minus a half. And so um, we have solved this into x cubed over 3 with limit 0 and 10. And then this can be expanded uh, into k squared minus k plus a quarter. Um, and the important thing is we can now use our uh, summation formulas. When you have k squared sum from k equals to 1 to n, that is the same as n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6. And with this k here, uh, when we sum it from k equals to 1 to n, it's the same as n times n plus 1 over 2. So we're going to use these formulas to just plug into this, and knowing that n at this, in this uh, case is 10, uh, we'll just plug into this uh, formula, and we'll be able to obtain our answer. So... Um, for k squared, we said it's n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6, which is n, n being 10 is 10 times uh, 11 times uh, 21 over 6 minus uh, n times n plus 1 over 2, that is 10 times 11 over 2, uh, plus a quarter, 10 times, so 10 times a quarter. So this is the same as 1,000 over 3 minus 385 plus 55 minus 5 over 2. Um, and that becomes um, 2,000 uh, over 6, obviously. 2,000 minus 1980 minus 15, having said the common denominator is 6, and that is um, 2,000 minus 1980 is 20, 20 minus 15 is 5, 5 over 6 happens to be our answer.